excited to show you some drum pad exercises in this lesson today. Um, I've been involved with Girls Rock Campaign Boston for about four years now um, and I have been a drum instructor, I've been a guitar instructor, and I've always been a band coach um, and I really love it and it's really great and special and amazing. Um, I've been playing drums for about nine years now. I'm completely self-taught um, and I also play bass and guitar. I play bass in a band called Pale Hound, and um, I'm pl I play drums in a band called Dump Him, and also a band called The Michael Character right now. Um, and yeah, I am super stoked to get to have a little lesson with everyone watching today. Um, and basically what you'll need for today is a pair of sticks. They can be your favorite pair of sticks. They can be any pair of sticks. These sticks are actually not even my sticks. I had to borrow them from a friend um, because I don't have any in a quarantine right now. Um, I'm going to be using a drum pad, but y'all can use whatever is accessible. Um, if you have a drum pad, that's awesome. Bust it out. Um, but you could also follow along if you have access to a drum kit in your house. You could use your snare drum. You could use a tom. Um, and if you have none of that, which is totally understandable, um, you could use a book or you could just use like a surface of a table with maybe like a cloth over it. You could even use a pillow. You could use your bed. I have this like random box from the mail that I have my drum pad on, but you could definitely use that too. Um, the cool thing about drum exercises uh, is that you can literally use any surface that is hitable. <laughs> So yeah, just find something that works for you, um, position it in a spot that feels comfy for you, get your sticks ready, and yeah, I mean the last thing that you should bring to this lesson is just a positive attitude. Uh, the stuff we're going to be going over um, can definitely be tricky. It's not always second nature to uh, drummers, whether you're a beginner or even advanced. Like I didn't really start focusing on these kind of like rudimentary exercises until I was, you know, like 24 or five or something. And here we are. Um, but yeah, it's really fun and exciting and cool. Um, and I think it will be able to offer you a lot um, in your playing moving forward. Um, and what we're going to be covering today is the basics of how to hold the sticks properly, um, single strokes, double strokes, We'll show you a flam, and maybe if we have time, we'll get into the paradiddle, but if not, we'll cover that in a different lesson. Um, so yeah, so let's get right into it. So if you have your sticks, um, the correct place to hold them is at the fulcrum, and that's just a fancy word for the balance point of the stick. Um, some of you may be using those classic Vic Firth sticks that have the little flag like around here, and that's usually a good starting point um, to find your fulcrum if you kind of like hold it between your two fingers right there um, and it should balance evenly on each side like if you're down here and it's like what then you're too far down but then if you go up here and it's like what then you're too far up so just find that happy medium somewhere in between and you know you want to find that with both sticks just so that they're kind of lightly teetering and then that's where you're going to hold you're going to grip you want to grip with your thumbs on one side and then grab with the rest of your fingers on the other side. Um, and ideally you want to kind of hold it between your first and your second finger like that so that you can have um, as much wrist uh, technique as possible in this time. Um, so yeah, so once you got your sticks situated, we're going to sink on into the single stroke, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, with a single stroke, you're going to stroke the pad or the drum or the book or the pillow one time with each hand. So we're just going to go right, left, 
right, left, right, left, right, left. Pretty easy, right? Not too bad. Um, something important to remember when you're doing this is uh, how tightly you're gripping the sticks. You want to have the stick bounce back a little bit and that comes from holding it in the proper spot. If you're holding it at the fulcrum, it should kind of just naturally bounce back. Um, you don't want to be super heavy handed and you don't want like, you don't want to have like a really tight, tense wrist or arm. Like you don't want to be like trying to break your stick, you know, you're not like Keith Moon or something yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just kind of gently go between the right and the left. And also take as long as you need. There's no rush with this. You can literally take 30 minutes just to sink into the right motion of this and until it feels like you see that stick kind of bouncing right back up at you. And if you just sort of let it fall, if you like lift your thumb up and you have it kind of like this on your first finger and then you sort of lift your thumb up, you'll see how that natural bounce back happens. And that's kind of the idea of what you want to be happening after you hit it. You know, you want to sort of feel it and you can kind of see, like with my sticks, like at the end here, how it kind of just pops back up. Right, left, right, left, right. Cool, so let's, uh, if you kind of are feeling that, let's count to eight with those and sort of try to keep it in a tempo. So we'll do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Cool. Yeah, so you just kind of, you can keep on, keep on doing that for a while until you feel good. Um, and a way to kind of spice that up a little bit um, and strengthen your left hand. If you're a right-handed player, um, typically you're going to start right with your right hand, right, left right left if you're a left-handed player you might start with your left hand but let's start with our not dominant hand right now so I started with my right with these so I'm gonna start with my left so let's switch to our other hand um, just to see how that feels starting on that so now we're gonna count to eight starting with your other hand so I'm starting with my left hand ready left right left right left right left right one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Cool. Um, now let's go between the two. So we're going to go, we're going to do right, left for eight counts, and then we're going to do left, right, or alternatively, left, right, first, right, left, second. You get the point. So let's start it off. Right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now switch, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, keep going, left, right, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. So that's an exercise um, you can practice for single strokes. Um, you can also bring up the speed a little bit. Um, so if you're starting like one, two, three, four, like that, you could kind of like every time gradually bring it up a little. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, and you kind of can just keep practicing this and eventually eventually you'll just be able to feel it naturally in your muscles. You'll have muscle memory around it, so you'll be able to just speed it up naturally. Um, and yeah, so if you guys are feeling good about that, feel free to pause the video for as long as you want. Practice that. 
Um, it can definitely be something that takes a minute to really sink into and feel good about. So take your time. I know you'll get it. Um, but whenever you're ready to move on, let's hit some double strokes. Um, so a double stroke is basically just two single strokes per hand. So if your single stroke is like one, two, three, four, your double stroke, you're going to hit it twice with each hand. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, don't go away. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let's do, let's do the same kind of exercise we did for the single stroke. So we'll count to eight with each one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Pretty, pretty easy. You know, once you get the hang of it, pretty easy. Um, we can also switch the hand we start on, um, just like we did before. So I'm going to start with my left hand now and go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, yeah. So moving right along here. Um, Let's try to speed that up a little bit. So if you wanted to do it a, a, a little bit faster, it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Same thing if you want to do the other hands. Left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Cool. So I'm going to bring out a metronome. Um, some of y'all may have access to one at home. If you don't, it's completely fine. I'm just going to use it to kind of keep things in context and make sure that like you understand as clearly as possible like where I'm coming from with like the beats and the notes and all of this. Um, if anyone's curious, uh, I have this metronome app on my phone. It's called Pro Metronome. It looks like this. It's like the most basic one that you could get. I think it's like 99 cents or free in the app store. If you want to go over and pop over there and, and get that, um, you can continue these exercises with metronome, which is really fun and cool. Um, and for context, I'm going to be uh, doing just regular 4-4 four, four time signature, and I have the tempo set to 95. Um, so yeah, let's so let's try doing... Is my sound on? That's the question. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do a couple exercises that we um, that we just went over. So I'll start with the single strokes, just with the metronome, so you can hear it in context. Um, and I'll start just with single strokes, and then I'll add the double strokes in. And, and you'll kind of see how it sounds in context. Um, so hopefully you can hear that. I'll put it closer to the thing. So here's our here's our tempo. Ready? One, two single strokes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now we'll switch. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and switch again. Right, left. Switch left, right, left, right, right, left, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Cool. So something I should add about this particular exercise with the single strokes is when if you're going consistently and switching to the other hand after you do it eight times, four times, however many times you want to do it, um, you're actually doing a double stroke when you switch. So we're doing right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, double, right. So you see how that works? It's like 
just to switch back and forth, you use the double stroke. So we'll do that and then we'll add some doubles. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, double. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Here we go. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. All right, now we're going to do that same thing, but with double strokes. One, two, three, starting with right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep it here. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Now we're gonna start with the other hand. One, two, three, four. Left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's switch hands after each phrase like we did before. Three, four. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left. Stay left, left, right, right, left, left, right. And right, right, left, left, right, right, left, 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 right, right, left, left, right, right. Cool. I bet y'all are doing awesome. I wish I could see because that's the funnest part. But hopefully one day, maybe I will see your progress somehow, somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the basics of the singles and the double strokes. I actually have one more kind of cool thing that I want to share with y'all about that. But um, again, I know this is, for some, this might be boring stuff. For some, this might be crucial stuff. Um, but it is really just a good way to have kind of like, they're called rudiments. So it is like rudimentary practice. Um, and having good sticking and being comfortable with like changing your hands and being comfortable and knowledgeable of the different kinds of strokes is really going to open up a lot of options on the drum kit for you like something cool about a double stroke is like if you're sitting at the kit you know you might be like man i feel like i'm doing the same fills all the time and something that could spice up your fills is if you do a fill you usually do but just do it as double strokes or even just do a fill across the entire kit as double strokes you know, just hit a random drum and hit it as double strokes and it's gonna sound different, which is a really cool thing. And that's a cool thing about drums in general is like, you know, we don't have like harmonics or like notes particularly on the drums, but like the way you hit something and how you accent it and what hand you use or what sticking you use is really gonna make a huge difference and it's gonna sound really cool. Um, so yeah, so before we finish up with the singles and doubles, oh, my foot's asleep. Switch it up. Okay, feeling great. Um, I hope y'all are feeling great too. Again, if you need to take a break, pause this vid, um, get some water, eat a snack, uh, stretch out your hands a little bit. I'm sure we'll have another video on proper stretching techniques for when you're drumming. Um, but yeah, take a sec, do whatever you gotta do, take care of yourself. Um, and when you're ready, we are going to talk about how to do some cool accents on this here little pad with your sticks. So sticking with the single strokes and double strokes um, lesson, something you can do to accent, which by the way, if um, accent might be a new word to some of you, um, basically what it means is when a note is accented, that's the note that cuts through a little more, or that's the note that's a little bit louder. Um, so if we're sticking with our single strokes, for example, something you can do is accent every right hand, and then we could do every left hand. But we're gonna start with every right hand. So just so you can hear it without the metronome, I'm gonna play it without, but then we'll put it all into practice at the end. So if we're just starting here with our right, left, this is kind of like, you know, these dynamically, these are the same. But if I want to accent the right, one, two, three, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, 
two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the accent is the louder one. You're applying a little bit more pressure to it. And I was really thwacking it just to get the point across. But, you know, you don't have to, like, hurt yourself. <laughs> Again, we don't want to break the sticks. We don't want to break the drum. We just want it to be a little bit louder. Um, so I was doing every one, um, or I was doing every other one. Sorry, that might have been confusing. But I'm going to do, I'm going to accent every one now. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left. And all that's happening is I'm just hitting this one a little louder and the other one's slightly softer. Um, and you could also just hit that one louder and keep the other ones like the same. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you could bring it really down if you want like a big dynamic difference. Um, so now let's try accenting every right hand. So right, left, 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 right, left. So you want a louder right hand, I'm falling, louder right hand, softer left hand. Right? Kind of makes sense. Um, and now we can switch it and we can accent the left hand, but we're still going to start with our right hand. So we're, now we're going to do quiet right, loud left. If you wanted to do that with double strokes, you could do the same concept where you accent one hand, but you're going to be hitting it twice. So it would be like if we're accenting the right hand with double strokes, we do right, right, left, left, 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 right. And if you wanted to accent the left hand with double strokes, you would go. Sorry, starting with the right hand, but accenting the left hand. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And there's so many different combinations you can do with this. Like once you kind of get comfortable, I would say really focus on trying to just, if you want to practice accents, um, practice doing just single strokes and accenting one hand at a time. Right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, or right, left, 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 right, left. And you can space the accents out as far as you want. Once you get comfortable with the basics, it's endless of possibilities. Um, so I'm just going to put the metronome on. I'm going to go through some of these accents. Um, feel free to play along if you want. Um, feel free to skip this part if you don't care about accents. But um, for those of you who are interested, um, we're going to do the same thing, 95 BPM on this metrono metronome app. Um, and yeah, I'll try, I'll try to remember to call out um, before each one when I switch. So hopefully you can hear that. So we're just going to start with regular single strokes, and I'll do some uh, accents, and then I'll go to double strokes, normal, and then do some accents. One, two, three, four. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now I'll accent the right hand. Right, left, 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 right. And now back to normal. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now I'll accent every right hand. the left hand right two three four right left 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 normal 
Now I'm going to go into double strokes. just the first of the two rights. Let's see if we can do that. Right, right, right. So the difference between that and full, right, 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 right. Sorry, I kind of messed that up. I mean, I rock. Yeah. Cool. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, the ac accents, again, you can do however you want. Um, but yeah, that is a whole lot that you guys are putting into your brain right now. Um, and again, take your time. Do it as slowly as you want to. If you have a metronome, you could literally put it on like 70 BPM, 60 BPM, whatever you want to do. Um, and just do it so it works for you. And don't overwhelm yourself. This kind of stuff, like I said, it's like rudimentary. It can be kind of basic, but it is really formulative for your playing. Um, and sometimes it can make your brain hurt. So like take t 10 minutes, maybe do one or two exercises here and there. Um, don't overwhelm yourself. You know, you want to get better. You don't want to like give yourself a headache. Um, but I know you can do it because I did it and here we are. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, cool. So we have just a few more minutes, minute, minutes, <laughs> minutes left. Um, I'll just show you guys a little flam. Um, some of you may know it, some of you may not. But um, basically a flam is a way of hitting the snare or the pad or the table, whatever drum you have um, in front of you. Um, and instead of hitting it, you're going to use both sticks um, instead of hitting them at the same time. A flam is when one stick drops just before the other and makes a really subtle kind of like <laughs> sound. So like really slowly a flam is like <laughs> so you kind of you when it's that slow you can hear how the first hand hits before the second hand. Um, but in context when it's quick it's just like <laughs> and you you can't hear it as as obviously. Um, so basically all I'm doing with the flam is I'm taking, I'm putting my right hand on the bottom and I'm raising my left stick up a little bit more and I'm just letting gravity take control and I'm just letting them fall. And the right, my right hand is naturally going to fall a little bit sooner, sorry, <laughs> a little bit sooner than the left hand. And that, and that's what causes that. This one's a little weird too. It can be a little tricky. Again, take your time. You don't want to force it. Like you don't want to be like, but um, like it's not. It's not like the single stroke where you're like that, right? It's just like kind of loosely just letting it fall. And it, when when you end up nailing it, what it's gonna sound like is you're barely gonna be able to tell that it's two sticks. Good way to practice is just doing exactly that. You can start it really drastically with your hands far apart and get the feel for what it's like for one stick to hit the drum, the pad, whatever first, followed by the other stick. And just keep doing that. You know, while you're watching TV, while you're listening to music, while you're hanging out with someone via FaceTime because we can't hang out more than six feet apart, less than six feet apart right now, you can just practice the flam. And then you can, same thing, same idea with the other ones, you can kind of speed it up. You can also switch hands, so you could have your left hand go um, hit the hit the pad first. I'm not as good at it that, that way, but who knows? Some of you probably are really good at it that way. But it's the same concept. One stick hits first, one stick hits second. Boom. Cool. Y'all just learned so much today. That's awesome. Um, I, it's looking like our, our time is 
nearing an end. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, but, ooh, severe weather statement. Um, yeah, if you enjoy what you're seeing here, like this video, subscribe to the Girls Rock Campaign Boston YouTube channel. Um, there are definitely going to be many more awesome lessons from other really cool, amazing uh, rock campaign um, instructors. Every Sorry, I saw like it's like darken up. Um, yeah, there's going to be other instructors posting really great videos. Um, Y'all will be, definitely be able to learn a lot. Um, if you can, please give a few bucks to, uh, to GRCB right now. Uh, of course, everybody is uncertain of the future. No one is really sure uh, how things are going to play out. Um, and uh, the GRCB family really wants to keep giving back to the community um, in any way they can. Um, and these virtual online lessons uh, seem to be a step in the right direction for that and seem to be definitely a good way to give back um, to folks who still want to be involved and still want to be constantly learning and challenging themselves, which is so amazing. So uh, I know times are tough, money is tight. If you have a couple bucks to spare, um, go ahead and donate it, uh, the suggested donation to Girls Rock Campaign Boston. Um, and if you don't, that's completely fine. Um, maybe just give this video, give another video, subscribe to their, to their channel, um, and just share as much as you can um, about, about GRCB because um, everybody involved, all the volunteers, all of the folks involved are doing a lot of work right now to ensure that the, the youth and the folks who would have been involved with the in-person programming um, are still able to access lessons and information that maybe they can't get otherwise. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you happen to have any questions, feel free to contact me or contact uh, GRCB. You can get that sorted out. So good luck playing. I know you got this. Can't wait to hear about your progress. Take care. Be safe. Because we're all in this now, but our dreams can come true. Sustain our sound, GRCB me too. All in this now, but our dreams can come true. Sustain our sound, GRCB me too. Sustain our sound, make it loud. Help us keep up the fight. GRCB, all right. Help us keep up the fight.